Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night online Bible study. We're so happy that you've chosen to join us this evening. And uh, we're going to just enjoy the presence of the Lord, enjoy the word of the Lord together. We're going to begin with the word of prayer. Let's ask the Lord to bless our time together and ask him to bless those that uh, we've been praying for, those that are sick. Uh, pray for our spiritual leaders that are making decisions, our political leaders that are making decisions to help us as we move through this pandemic. Uh, if you have a, a family member that has a need, I would encourage you to pray for them as we're praying. The Lord can hear your prayers right where you are. So let's join together in prayer as we begin this service. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy to us. Thank you for the kindness that you've extended to each of us. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this time we have together this evening. Lord, I pray that you would let your word be taught with power and authority. Let it minister to our needs and to our lives. I pray that you would speak to us from your word, Lord. I pray, God, that you would touch those that are sick and those that need your intervention. I pray for those, Lord, that are making decisions as we move through this pandemic. Give them wisdom and understanding. I pray for our governor and our president, Lord, as they uh, make decisions and lead us. Have your way, Lord. Bring this to a speedy conclusion, I pray, so that we can get back to our normal church services, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in the meantime, God, and what you'll do this evening through this Bible study. Keep us in your care, Lord. Help us to be ready for your soon return. We'll thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for those prayers and your continued prayers, not just uh, on Wednesday nights and on Sundays, but every day for that matter. Um, I want to make a few announcements before we sing together and get into the word of the Lord. Uh, first of all, um, we had a wonderful uh, Mother's Day service here in the parking lot, and thank you to all of you that were able to come and be a part of that service. And uh, we're looking forward to service this coming Sunday. And uh, we are planning another parking lot service. This, this Sunday, we're going to plan it for 2 o'clock. We've been watching uh, the weather forecast, and they're predicting some rain early in the day. So we're going to be uh, starting that parking lot service at 2 o'clock. And uh, we're going to drive in as we did this past Sunday and just enjoy the presence of the Lord together. So hope that you can join us. Tell your friends and family members about it. Maybe they can join us as well. It's going to be a great time. So God bless you. We serve a, we serve a prayer answering God. We serve a miraculous God. And uh, we're going to uh, sing a chorus together. Sing it with us, how the Lord can do the miraculous in our lives. Amen. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, water you turned into wine, open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, 
into our lives, anything that comes against us, and uh, we give him praise for that this evening, amen. I'm going to be reading uh, one verse of scripture from Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to finish our little uh, two lesson series on Noah and quarantine, scripture says, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 7, by faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Amen. Uh, we've been going through this time of quarantine and it has uh, been interesting to say the least. Uh, now almost 60 days of, of this quarantine and uh, We've learned a lot of things. We have uh, experienced a lot of things. We found out that uh, as we study the word of the Lord, we found out that quarantine is not an unusual thing uh, in the Lord's uh, way of doing things. Uh, last week we talked about Elijah, uh, spent some time in quarantine, Job, uh, David, Jeremiah, Saul of Tarsus, John the Baptist, um, and many others that we could talk about spent time in, uh, in, in solitude, in quarantine, not being able to uh, uh, do the things that they would normally do. We also talked a lot, and that's what we're going to uh, uh, discuss again tonight, about Noah and his family. Uh, Noah and his family were quarantined in the ark for more than 300 days. I hope this quarantine certainly doesn't last that long. But more than 300 days, maybe around 370 days, uh, Noah and his family spent in the ark uh, in this time, their time of quarantine. But during that time, uh, we can learn a lot of things, I think, uh, from Noah and his family and how they went through this quarantine. I talked to you about three things last week. I just want to briefly mention them by way of review tonight, then we'll move into uh, three more things I think that we can learn uh, from Noah and his time of quarantine. The first thing that we talked about last week was that uh, relationship with the Lord prior to quarantine is the key to surviving quarantine. And uh, what, uh, what Noah and his family learned is that they had this incredible relationship with the Lord prior to the time of going into the ark. And it, uh, it helped them to go through that experience. And, uh, of course, we all need to intensify and we need to uh, uh, develop our relationship with the Lord all of the time, especially in these good times, so that when the difficult and challenging times come, we can be like Noah and his family. He was a righteous man, the Scripture says. He was blameless uh, among the people of his time. And that he walked with God. And it was, it was these things that enabled him uh, to survive this very uh, severe quarantine in his life. Amen. We oftentimes wonder how these uh, uh, faithful saints of God can go through difficult, challenging, and uh, unusual times in their life. Well, it all, it all, it, we, they're able to go through that because of their relationship with the Lord that they develop prior to the challenge, the challenging time. We also talked last week about uh, that the Lord was with Noah during the time of 
quarantine, the Lord said to Noah, come thou and thy family into the ark. The Lord was in the ark, and, and he invited them to come into the ark with him. Amen. And so how do we endure quarantine? How do, what do we learn from Noah and his family is that God promised that he would be with us during the time of quarantine. Uh, when I say quarantine, I'm talking about difficult times. I'm talking about uh, spiritually dry times in our lives. I, I'm talking about uh, times when we don't understand what's going on. And, and frankly, we all have these times in our walk with God, whether we want to admit it or not. Suddenly, this ark that could have felt like a prison uh, actually maybe was more of a palace, more of a, an opportunity for the presence of the Lord to be there with Noah and his family. And so always remember in the times of, 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 of quarantine, the times of difficulty, the times of, of uh, uh, spiritual dryness that God is right there with us. His name was called by Isaiah Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us and so uh, always remember the second thing is that that the Lord was with Noah during the time of quarantine and then finally last week we concluded by talking about how God gave Noah a dove in the evening uh, he sent out the raven the raven did not return he sent out the dove the dove came back uh, the second time he sent out the dove the dove came back with an olive leaf uh, in its mouth and what God did is he gave Noah these, uh, these moments of, uh, uh, of, of clarity, these moments of his presence, these moments of understanding during the time of quarantine. And I'm very thankful that even when I'm going through challenging and difficult times, maybe it's, a, maybe it's an early morning prayer time that I have. Maybe it's just a phone call that someone uh, calls me and says, the Lord... The Lord's been laying you on my heart, and I've been praying for you. Maybe it's a text message that someone sent. Maybe it's just a, maybe it's just a verse of Scripture that I read that just kind of jumps off the page at me. And what we learn from Noah during this time of quarantine is that God didn't forget him, and that God was there with him, and that God gave him these small little uh, uh, touches, these small little... Uh, experiences during the time of quarantine and so uh, I, I, I reminded you last week as we were concluding about John uh, John the Revelator he was in the spirit on the Lord's Day and he had this vision and this revelation and what an amazing experience it was for John he was still on the Isle of Patmos but the Lord visited him in that moment and so you might be going through something right now. You might be going through this quarantine. It's really beginning to wear on you. But I can promise you, if you'll feel after the Lord, seek the Lord. As Paul told uh, those uh, participants on Mars Hill, seek the Lord. If haply you might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. And so uh, those are the first things that we can learn from Noah and his quarantine. Now I want to talk to you about... Uh, three more things that I think would be, hopefully would be valuable to us. Uh, I'm reading from Genesis chapter 8. I'll begin at verse number 15. Genesis 8 and 15. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wives and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that was with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. What Noah learned, I think, that we need to also learn is that quarantine will not last forever. Quarantine will not last forever. I know it seems like forever. Uh, I remember when I was uh, a child, we would make this journey from Indianapolis to uh, Salina, Ohio, where my grandma and grandpa lived. And from, from just outside, I'm sure, of our neighborhood, we would start asking the question, are we almost there? How much longer? And uh, I know my parents got so tired of hearing that question 
And, uh, you know, I, I got it back from my own kids. You know, you pay for your raising. And uh, my kids would ask the question, are we almost there? How much longer is it going to be? And uh, uh, they, they asked those questions because it was a real, it was a real uh, challenging time for them to sit in the back seat, sit in that car seat. Um, and, and sometimes going through the difficult times uh, of life are very challenging and very difficult. But I want you to remember that the quarantine will not last forever. One of these days, God is going to speak. Can you imagine how Noah felt when he heard the voice of God that said, Go forth of the ark. Get out of the ark. Take your wife and your kids and uh, their, their wives and the animals and get out of that ark. Amen. What a wonderful opportunity uh, and what a wonderful experience that must have been. And truly one of these days, this quarantine that we're in is going to end. I know we don't think it. And if you listen to the news media, they're trying to make you think it's going to last forever. I think they have some ulterior motives in that, but whatever. But I'm telling you, this quarantine will not last forever. I'm also telling you that the trial that you're enduring will not last forever. That the loneliness that you feel will not last forever. Don't give up on the Lord and don't give up on your family. The loneliness will not last forever. The dry spell of not feeling the presence of the Lord, it's not going to last forever. Some of us felt the Lord in a very powerful way Sunday in the parking lot. And so it won't last forever. Amen. Eventually, God will say, go forth. Go forth. Amen. Sometimes the only way I can endure things is just re reminding myself it's not always going to be like this. I was sitting in the dentist chair a few years ago and I said to the person that was cleaning my teeth when she finished the bottom half of one side I said 25 percent done and she started laughing I mean I was counting down I absolutely detest sitting in the dentist chair and uh, the only way I can get through it is thinking to myself, this is not going to last forever. You know, it's half over. It's three quarters over. It's almost done. Well, I came to remind us, have faith. Be encouraged. Draw strength from the fact that quarantine will not last forever. The sun will shine again. I know sometimes it seems like it's a long night. If you can't sleep, have you experienced this? If you can't sleep, it seems like the night just creeps along. It seems like it's going to be dark forever. But rest assured, the sun is going to rise. The sun will come up. Amen. When Job had his very un unfortunate and difficult experience, remember what he said. He said, when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. When the Lord is finished with this time of quarantine for me, I shall come forth as gold. What he was saying to himself basically was, it's not going to be like this forever. I think about the unfortunate experience of people that maybe, you know, make very bad decisions in times of difficulty. And I often say to myself, if they would have just waited six more hours, if they would have just waited one more day, if they would have just waited till the next day, they would have realized that it was going to get better. And so I'm here to encourage you this evening. Just remember the Lord is still on the throne and he's right there with you. And quarantine will not last forever and the Lord will bring you through that. There's a couple of verses of scripture that I wanted to share with you. And maybe these are verses that I haven't, I haven't used uh, actually in this context as of yet. Uh, but I think they're very, uh, I think they're very encouraging. First uh, Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10. Uh, the book of First Peter is a, has a lot to do with suffering, a lot about suffering. And listen to what, listen to what Simon Peter said. And the God, First Peter 5.10, and the God of all grace who hath called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, 
will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. This translation, the New International Version translation of this verse, is very, uh, very instructive to us. Peter said, and he knew what suffering was all about. He understood. He denied the Lord. He went through all of that. Uh, it, was, it, was, uh, uh, it was a time when he was wondering about his future. He's the guy who ended up saying, you know, I'm going fishing. He understood a little bit about suffering. And, and he said, after we suffer a little while. So the first thing he wanted us to understand about suffering is it won't last forever. After you have suffered a little while, the Lord himself will restore you. In other words, this time of suffering will end. This time of quarantine will end in a particular time. And when, it, when it's finished, the Lord will make you strong. I know we don't enjoy going through quarantine times. We don't enjoy going through suffering and challenging and difficult times. But it makes us strong. It makes us firm. It gives us determination. It makes us steadfast. And so the advice of Simon Peter is simply, hang on. This suffering will not last forever. And actually, we're going to be learning things from this suffering as we go. I don't know about you, but uh, if I'm enduring something, just knowing that it's going to be beneficial after it's over with makes that in itself makes it a little bit easier to bear. And so I'm encouraging us in this time of quarantine God's building us. He's strengthening us. He is uh, uh, solidifying us. And we're going to be stronger as a result of this. Listen to what uh, Paul said to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 17 and 18. He said, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Our light affliction is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight in glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are, are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What Paul was trying to help them understand is what I'm really trying to say to us here uh, this evening, and that is that our light affliction is not going to last forever. It it is for a moment, but what it's doing is it's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Amen. I know this will be hard for you to uh, accept, but uh, you know what? If it weren't for some of these difficult times, some of us wouldn't even be in the church right now. If it were not for these challenging times in our lives that, that push us to our knees that force us to uh, trust the Lord and pray, if everything was always good in our lives, I seriously doubt that, uh, that many of us would be here and be in the church today. Because this light affliction, which is but for a moment, Paul said, is working a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. It's, it's helping us to be saved. Because if we only look at the things which are, are uh, uh, temporal, if we, only look at the things, if we only look at things as of right now, then it would be very discouraging. And we would say, why even try? Why you just give up? Why even, why even uh, struggle with this time of quarantine, this time of challenge? But it's working a far greater thing for us, and that is eternal reward. And so I, I'm just reminding you, uh, that, that we can learn from Noah and his quarantine that uh, God is, is not going to let this last forever and it's going to work a very strong spiritual end in our lives. So what's the worst thing we could do during times of quarantine is quit. The worst thing we could do is give up because we not, you know, we're still going to go through the quarantine. We might as well go through the quarantine, the difficult time, trusting in the Lord and working something far greater for our future. And so my encouragement to you today is to learn from Noah and his experience that uh, it won't last forever and God is going to work something greater for you through this time 
of quarantine. The next thing that we can learn from Noah and his family during this time of quarantine is, is uh, the scripture says in chapter 8, Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 20. I thought this was very interesting. Uh, and Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. So when he came out of the ark, the first thing that Noah did is he built an ark and he took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord and the Lord smelled the sweet savor and the Lord made the promise that he would never again destroy the earth by water and uh, it, was a, it was just a, a very special moment but I'm very interested in knowing that when Noah came out of the ark he did the very first the first thing he did is the last thing he did before he went into the ark. He built. He built an altar. He came out of the ark and he resumed doing what he was doing before he went into the ark. He continued building. He did not allow the quarantine to destroy his ministry, if I could say it that way what the Lord had called him to do, what the Lord was using him to do. He built an altar unto the Lord. Now, can I just, can I just challenge us? Maybe before we went into this time of quarantine, God was using you in particular ways. He was, he was working through you. He was uh, he was uh, opening doors for you. And maybe some of those doors have closed because of this time of quarantine. But I just, here's what we learned from Noah. Is when we come out of this quarantine, let's go back to doing exactly what we were doing before. Let's, let's allow God to use us in even greater ways than he did before this time of quarantine. Amen. I don't believe the Lord wants us to lose ground through this time. In fact, I believe he wants us to gain ground. I think he wants to come, us to come out of this stronger than, when, than what we went into it. And I'm going to talk more about that in just, just a moment. But uh, Noah built an altar unto the Lord when he came out of that ark. <clears throat> Actually, I was studying this... Uh, and this is actually the first mention of the word altar in Genesis chapter number 8, uh, verse number 20. Uh, it's alluded to uh, other times in Scripture uh, prior to this moment, but it is uh, not mentioned directly by name until this, this moment. Uh, quarantine... This quarantine produced, and here's the point I want to make. He came out of the ark and he built an altar. The altar was the, pur the purpose of the altar was uh, several fold. First and foremost was the, the purpose of the altar was for sacrifice. And so I think that we can learn from this that times of quarantine should should produce in us an attitude of sacrifice. We can become very uh, selfish if we're not careful. I think that's just the natural human uh, inclination is to be very selfish. It's all about me. It's all about what I like. It's all about what is important to me. But, you know, when Noah and his family went through this time of quarantine, the first thing it produced when they came out was an attitude of sacrifice. And I pray that God would help us to come through this quarantine with a, a more spiritual attitude of sacrifice than we've ever had before. Amen. Um, you know, like, uh, for example, this coming Sunday, we're going to move the service to uh, 2 o'clock instead of 11 o'clock. And, you know... Uh, prior to this time of quarantine, if we would have moved the service to a left from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, some people would have, had a, would have had a meltdown. You mean you're going to change the service from 10 to 11? But now, who cares? We're just happy to have church. Doesn't matter if it's 10, 11, 2, 
four, six. We're just happy to have church. What's, what's happening? We're kind of understanding what's really important and what's really, uh, uh, what's really not important. What's important is that we can have church. What's important is that we can get together and we can worship the Lord together. Whether it's in the, on the pew or whether it's in the parking lot or whether it's half of us or, and then the other half later, whatever. What is important? What is important is that we have this spirit of sacrifice that really doesn't matter just as long as we get accomplished what the Lord wants us to accomplish. And so uh, when, when Noah came out of the ark from this 370-day quarantine, the first thing he's, that he did is he began to build uh, an altar. He went right back to doing what he was doing before. Amen. I hope we don't have to kind of get warmed up to come to church. I hope you don't have to kind of get warmed up to, you know, be faithful to the house of the Lord. I hope that we're ready and raring to go. We come right out of the quarantine and we build an altar. Amen. And so uh, uh, the altar was, uh, first of all, it was him going back to building, which is what he did before. Uh, the altar was a type of uh, sacrifice. Amen. Uh, he came out of the time of quarantine and he built the altar. And the altar was the way that they dealt with sin in their life. I hope that this time of quarantine has caused us to reflect and to kind of look inward and to realize in our life, you know, some of these things that I thought were so important that God really didn't want me doing those are not that important at all. And we come out of this quarantine with a spirit of repentance and a, an attitude of repentance that, you know, Lord, whatever you want, that's what I want. Whatever you say that is important, that's what I say is important. And we come out of this with a, a spirit of repentance. Amen. Uh, dealing with our humanity, dealing with the sins in our life and so the altar is uh, is our equivalent of repentance and so I hope that this time of quarantine has has uh, developed this daily repentance in our lives I don't know about you but I get up in the morning and when I do my prayer time it's like Lord you know I, I know I've been hard to live with here lately you know forgive me of my sin help me to get things right I want to have the right attitude and the right spirit and so this time of quarantine caused Noah to build an altar unto the Lord, which uh, caused him, number one, to get back to work, and number two, meant that he was dealing with the sins, sin issue in his life. Amen. I love 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 and 11. Uh, these, these verses kind of tell us what real repentance looks like. Let me just read, them, read these verses to you. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 10, and 11. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this selfsame thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you. When you sorrowed after a godly sort, Paul said, it, it brought this carefulness in you. And true repentance brings a carefulness in us. I don't want to displease God. I don't want to do something that God doesn't like. He, said, he went on to say, Yea, what clearing of yourselves. When we truly repent, we, want people, we don't want people to see us in a light that would cause there to be a shadow over our spirituality. We want to clear ourselves we want to change our lifestyle we want to change our actions and our attitudes we want to clear ourselves of these you know these things that how many people have, when once they truly repented they went back and they they repaid somebody that they owed money to they they returned things that they had stolen because they're trying to clear themselves that's what true repentance does yea what indignation in other words i have this I have this uh, indignation or this, this uh, strong feeling of, I want to do what's right. I want to get back at, at, uh, at the devil for all the stuff he did to me, and I want to get back at him by doing what's right. Yea, what indignation, yea, what fear or respect. 
I now respect God. I don't want to do things that disappoint or displease Him. Yea, what vehement desire, what strong desire true repentance put in me to do what is right. Yea, what zeal. I'm just kind of over the top now. I have this, I have this strong urge, this zeal, this, this uh, energy to do what's right. Yea, what revenge. I want to I get revenge on the devil for what he did to me in my past life by doing what is right and doing what is good. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. That's what true repentance is. And we hope and pray that this time of quarantine has brought us to this place of repentance, this place of, of uh, self-introspection, this, this, uh, this attitude of, you know what? I want to do what's right. I want to be right. I want, I want, I want the Lord to, to be pleased with my life. And so what did Noah do when he came out of that ark? He built an altar. He went right back to work doing what the Lord had called him to do. He, uh, he dealt with sin, if you please, by building an altar and offering sacrifice. There's another application to an altar uh, in our life, and that is uh, praising God. The scripture says in, in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 15, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And so quarantine produces praise. It produces uh, altars and sacrifice uh, uh, as well as praise. Amen. Uh, when, I, when we come through this time of quarantine, I'm not sure that uh, this sanctuary is going to be able to hold all of us. I don't think these pews are going to be able to hold us all down because we're back into the presence of the Lord as a, as a body I mean, if Sunday was any indication, uh, some people couldn't stay in their car. I saw they started out in their car, but they ended up beside their car, kind of singing and clapping and shouting. And it was a wonderful experience. You know why? Because the time of quarantine can bring not only sacrifice, uh, repentance, and uh, building, going back to work, but it also can bring praise. It can, it can cause praise to to uh, just naturally flow from our hearts. And so uh, what, can, what can we learn from Noah and his time of quarantine? We can learn that he became an altar builder and God can help us to become altar builders in our time of quarantine as well. I have one more thing I want to say, uh, one more um, uh, one more lesson I think that we can learn from Noah and his family. And that is simply this. Genesis chapter 9 and verse number 1 says, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Here's the, here's the final lesson, and I'm sure there are many others, but this is the last one that I want to mention in this lesson. Expect blessings and revival to follow times of quarantine. Expect the blessings of God and revival to follow the times of quarantine. Noah walked out of that ark into a brand new world. He walked out of that ark into a pure, clean world. He walked out of that ark and it didn't resemble anything like it did when he went into that ark. I came to tell you and encourage you in the Holy Ghost tonight that you, we can experience the blessings and the growth of the Lord when we uh, endure quarantine and our quarantine ends. Amen. I believe our church is going to grow through this. I know there's been uh, a lot of people, some of you are watching us right now, and you're growing as a result of this, and I thank God for that. 
You feel stronger in the Lord. You've learned more about the Lord uh, through this time of quarantine. You've been studying your Bible just like uh, you've never studied your Bible before. You've been listening to more preaching and more teaching. You've been spending more time with the Lord. When we come out of this quarantine, I believe that personally we all can experience this wonderful growth and blessing of the Lord. And I believe as a result of our church members and people around us growing, all the church really is is just a, uh, an extension of families. That's what the church is. It's just, a, just a, a network of families. And so here's what it means. If you're growing and becoming stronger, then the church is growing and becoming stronger. If you're closer to the Lord through this time of quarantine, when you come out of it, then our church will be closer to the Lord. Do I have to remind us? I think we all know this, that God is a God of restoration. He's a God of restoration. He will restore. I love the prophecies in the Old Testament that God will restore what the enemy has taken. He'll restore what the, the locust and the palmer worm have, have destroyed. He's a God of restoration. And not just, not just financially, He is that. Not just physically, he is that. But he's a God of spiritual restoration. He's a God that will bless you as you come through this time of quarantine. Amen. We talk a lot, we've talked a lot about Job over the last uh, 60 days or so. And Job uh, went through a lot of stuff in his life. But you can read it for yourself in the last chapter of the book of Job. God blessed Job in his latter end with twice as much as he had before. He ended up with twice as many children. He ended up with twice as many camels, twice as many donkeys, twice as many sheep. His life was blessed immensely because his God was a God of restoration. We read a lot about uh, Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and she went through a very difficult time not, uh, not having a son not understanding why she could not give birth to a son uh, her, her, her husband Elkanah said to her am I not better to thee than ten sons you can tell he was getting frustrated with this whole situation you could tell he was dealing with the whole thing that this is this is really a challenging time. 1 Samuel 2 and 21 says, And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. It was difficult, yes. But God honored her faithfulness and gave her a son the prophet Samuel, but not only a son, but she continued to bless, he continued to bless her with five other children. I want to I caution us here. Quarantine can make us better or it can make us bitter. So be very careful how you go through this time of quarantine. Naomi, Naomi, her name, the name Naomi means pleasant. But some very difficult times came to her and her family. There was a great famine in the land of Bethlehem, Judah. And Naomi and her husband decided they were going to go to Moab. So they took, they took their two boys and off they went to the land of Moab I'm not so sure that was the best decision to make at that time because we learned later that Boaz stayed right there and God prospered him through that famine and when Naomi came back she was she was blessed because Boaz stayed but when she came back after going to the land of Moab her husband passed away two boys passed away 
one daughter-in-law said, okay, I'm staying here. Ruth finally said, I'm not, I'm not staying here. I'm going with you. Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. Thy God will be my God. Thy people will be my people. And so Ruth and Naomi came back to Bethlehem, Judah. And when she came back, everyone said, oh, it's, it's Naomi. Pleasant, happy, blessed. But Naomi said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which means bitter. I went out full and I've come back empty. Unfortunately, the quarantine had a very negative impact on Naomi and she came back and said just call me bitter because the Lord has dealt harshly with me I came to tell you you don't have to come back and say call me Mara you can come through this time of quarantine and you can be blessed you can be stronger you can you can not only survive but you can thrive we must do what we have to do to come out better and that is maintain that relationship with the Lord be faithful to God to his presence we'll come out stronger we'll come out closer to the Lord we'll come out with more faith we'll come out more determined to live for God and do the work of God than we ever have before. We'll come out of the quarantine more dedicated. We'll come out of the quarantine with more conviction and more strength because that's what we learn. When the quarantine is over, Noah teaches us there's going to be blessing. There's going to be promise. You're going to be fruitful and you're going to multiply and you're going to replenish the earth. I conclude with this one last illustration and I think it's appropriate because it's the example of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And the truth is, is that you and I have his spirit in us. His spirit rests in us. I want you to see Jesus as he went through a time of quarantine on the Mount of Temptation. He went into the wilderness. The devil came and tempted him. He overcame every temptation. He overcame every temptation by quoting the word of the Lord to the devil. Satan said, you know, if you're really who you say you are, command that these stones be made bread and Jesus said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God Jesus maintained this strength this power this fortitude during this time of quarantine the devil tempted him again you know if you're who you say you are bow down and worship me I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. If you're who you say you are, jump off the pinnacle of the temple and the angels will come and bear thee up lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. And all three times Jesus quoted the verse, a verse of scripture to him from the Old Testament. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And what I'm really interested in, after all of this experience, fasting for 40 days, when Jesus, the man Christ Jesus, was at the weakest moment of his physical existence, the devil came and tempted him. And he came through this time of quarantine. And Luke chapter 4 and verse number 14 says that Jesus returned in the power of the 
Spirit. He returned in the power of the Spirit. In other words, he came through that quarantine, that time of temptation, that time of of a spiritual attack, if you please. And he came through it victoriously. And he returned in the power of the Spirit. And he immediately began to evangelize in the Decapolis, which was the ten cities that are believed to have been built by Alexander the Great around the Sea of Galilee. He began to preach and to teach and the power of the Spirit I'm telling you, we can come through quarantine with the power of the Spirit guiding and directing us. Has it been challenging? Will it be challenging? Sure. Yes, absolutely. Have have there been some times when I've kind of wondered, how's this all going to turn out? Am I going to be able to make it through this? Yeah, yeah. Am I going to come out victorious in the name of Jesus? Absolutely. The same spirit that resided in the man Christ Jesus is that same spirit that's in every Holy Ghost filled child of God. And we're going to come through this time of of challenge, this time of difficulty, this time of quarantine. And we're going to come out into a beautiful new world. We're going to come out and we're going to be blessed. We're going to be strong. We, We will have grown because of the time of quarantine. Thank you, Noah. I know it wasn't easy. I know you didn't understand everything that was happening at the time it was all taking place. But thank you for going through your quarantine because you've taught us we'd better have a relationship with the Lord prior to quarantine if we're going to go through it. You've taught us that the Lord is going to be with us and will even carry us through our time of quarantine. You've taught us You can watch out for the small little signs that God will give us during this time of quarantine and it'll give us the strength and give us the ability to make it through these difficult and challenging times. You've reminded us, again, that quarantine will not last forever and one day God will say, come out. It's time to come out. You reminded us that we must get back to work. We must repent. And we must worship. And finally, you told us and you showed us, expect blessings and revival to follow our time of quarantine. Amen. I'm thankful that God recorded all these things about Noah in his word for us. Because you know what it does for me and for you? It gives me strength and it makes me believe and it makes me hang on knowing one of these days we'll come out one of these days there'll be a rainbow in the sky one of these days we'll experience the blessing of the Lord again and God's going to strengthen us through this time of quarantine but why don't you bow your heads with me we're going to pray I'm going to ask the Lord to strengthen you Jesus I thank you for your word thank you for the word that has somehow I believe spoken to our hearts tonight God I pray for those that are struggling right now in this time of quarantine, God. I ask you to be real to them. Let them feel your presence, God. Let them know that you haven't forsaken them and that you are right there with them, God. I'm asking you, Lord, to give them a small sign. Give them a dove in the evening right now, Lord. Let them feel the warmth of your glory as you wash over their soul now, God. The tears that are flowing down their cheeks right now, let it be a sign to them, God, that you have, that you, that you know right where they are and that you are with them, God. I pray, Lord, that you would help us. Help us not to lose our intensity and lose our focus, God, through this time. But I'm asking you, Lord, to help every one of us, myself included, God. Help us to refire ourselves, oh God. Help us to renew, help us to renew our dedication to you in this time of quarantine, knowing that as we come out of this time, Lord, you're going to bless us and you're going to strengthen us. I thank you by faith, Lord, for the blessing and the promise. I thank you for the revival, Lord, that you're doing and giving in us and you will give to us and our church, Lord, through this time. I thank you for what you've done and what you will do, Lord. We're going to give you glory. We're going to give you honor for it all. 
the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we magnify your name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we magnify your name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Oh, great. 